very here this morning. It's uh, kicking it all off today. She's hot. She's racy. She's positively sizzling. It's raining men. She's shameless. Yeah. It may be cold outside, but I can tell you in the studio it's getting very, very hot. She left Emmerdale in disgrace after trying to seduce her brother's boyfriend. But she's back. Goodness. Nicola Blackstock returning to the Dales and our studio. And there she is, as, as brazen as ever. The girl's <laughs> shameless. <laughs> word forward. Mm, yes, first there was that chef, Carlos, wasn't mm. there? Then she seduced the 16-year-old schoolboy, Robert Sugden. Yeah, didn't mm. stop there. No, no, she had to get her claws into the local fishmonger, <laughs> Simon. <laughs> and if she'd had her way, she'd have got it on with the bisexual bin man, who happened to be her brother's boyfriend. Complicated? Mm. No, he was called Ivan. Men of Emmerdale, you've been warned. Nicola Blackstock is back. I could sink my fangs into him, no messing. You know, I've always lacked one in a suit. Do you want to go upstairs? I'm in the mood for a bit of action. And despite and uh, alongside all these uh, conquests, uh, we, our eyes were drawn uh, to your hairstyles, <laughs> yes. which have changed quite a lot. Yes, I think I've had the most hairstyles in the Dale. I, do, I, I get bored with my hair very easily. It's kind of a way of me claiming my identity back, I think, in, in the last five years I was in it. So it would literally be every six months I'd go, right, I'm going to cut it all off, now I'm going to grow it, now, <laughs> now I'm going to cut it again. Well, now, of, of course, because, and you can explain the, the circumstances, of Mrs. D'Souza, mm. uh, that she uh, she comes back moneyed. Oh, it's great. When they, when they asked me to come back and they said to me, by the way, she's going to be a millionaire, of course, it was like, yay, better wardrobe. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah she's married um, a 72-year-old man who is called Donald. Unfortunately, Donald died. Um, but there's a there's a big air of mystery about Nicola and Donald's relationship because we're not quite sure how much love was involved and Nicola's very cagey about talking about it. But she has, however, gleaned Donald's millions. Could she so. have helped Donald on his way? Well, there's a suggestion by Paul about Viagra, but <laughs> I don't think we'll find out just yet. Viagra as a murder weapon? Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Not well, Viagra Hell. <laughs> that's, that's what it is, yes. <laughs> so, tomorrow <clears throat> night, Nicola, who is now Nicola de Souza, mm -hmm. turns up. And we've got a little clip. Not, it's actually just to confuse the issue. It's not for tomorrow, but it's Thursday night. Have a okay, look at this. Right. <laughs> you know I'll win in the end. And you could do a lot worse than get into bed with me. Speaking figuratively, of course. I'm not giving in. I know people. My dad. You know your own dad? Good for you. He's a very influential man. He's got a lot of connections, and one word from me, it'll make your life very uncomfortable. So, who is he? His name's Eric Pollard. <laughs> That's small-time loser. I'm terrified. Now, if you don't mind, I've got a busy schedule. <laughs> Do you know what I see there? You remember when Joan Collins took over the Carrington business and she turned around in the swivelling chair and went, actually, I am the new managing <laughs> director. It was just like... Well, I think that's what I'm in my, when on my re-entry as such, it sounds bizarre, that's it, it come from space or something. When I come back into it, that's exactly what you see is me swivel around in the big black chair. But the, there was no glamour involved because I actually had to have two boxes because the chair was so high. <laughs> and the first time I did it, I actually did a 360, you know, I was supposed to stop and I couldn't. So we had to get boxes so I could ground myself. So you still, if you look carefully, you'll probably probably see me go like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, the last time you were, you were in here, you were discussing the fact that you, you know, wanted to do other things mm. and, uh, and the, the theatre was beckoning and yes. all sorts of bits and pieces. So, so why decide to go back? 
Well, I think uh, basically because I've done other things and I I've, I've, have been really lucky in the 18 months I had off, I've not stopped. And I have sort of gone under the radar, so, you know, I've gone below the radar and gone off to do theatre and I did... Sounds awful for Sky, but below the radar, I did Cirque du Celebrity, which was a lower profile sort of reality show, which well, you I love. quite high up. You probably showed up on the radar. I would have thought you were quite high because that's uh, up in the trapeze. They taught you all sorts yes, of stuff. Didn't yes, they? they taught me all sorts of painful things there. But that was great fun. But I, I sort of spent a year doing lots of different things. And then. To be honest, it was just getting to the time where television, I was, I was feeling ready to go back into TV again. And Emma Dale offered the job. And I thought, well, what would stop me? I'm being offered somewhere to work where I live. Because mm -hmm. I, I'd relocated up to Leeds. And mm -hmm. I thought, you know, if it was another job, I'd take it straight away. So what would stop me taking Emma Dale? And of course, it is a little bit is the ego of going, Oh, do you want to go back to something you've already done? And I thought, well, I do it in theatre all the time. Mm. I go constantly do different plays, and I would do a play I'd previously done before. But also, to, to leave the security of a, in a good, mm. solid, fun, challenging, regular job is tough. And you get back, you go out into the outside world and realise, actually, yeah. it's pretty damn tough. Well, for me, a lot of it was... I haven't worked in Leeds since I left. All my work brought me south and yeah. so it was kind of, I just would love to wake up in my own bed mm. and to get up and go to work from my own house and come home to my own house and that's what I miss. Mm. So really, Emma Dale beckoned and it was always a great job and there was always a possibility of me going back. I just, I, what, the only thing I really had to question was whether I was ready to go back this soon or did I need a little bit more time but of course the reality is later in a year or next year it, the offer may not have been there they asked me to go back at a certain point so you never you weren't ever certain whether you would be going back then because you left being dragged out of the wall back <laughs> shouting if there were was a, an x factor for losers you'd all win it <laughs> <laughs> but you're back i still believe that <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah um, it, i when i left um when i made the decision i did ask can it be left open because i didn't want to be killed off and and thankfully the producer, Kath Beadles, said, no, great, you know, that, oh, that's fine. Good. And this all stemmed from at a party ch chatting to a storyliner at the beginning of the year. And she said, she basically said to me, we keep talking about characters coming back and interesting stories. And yours is one of them that keeps coming up. Mm. And would you come back? And I sort of said, well, yeah, but at the time I was doing a play, I didn't even think, oh, it would go ahead. And then sort of two months later, the call to my agent, we've come up with a great idea to so bring her back. And well, she's a great character. I mean, she's won you a soap award. Yes. yes. No, best bitch. Yes. So, uh, so that's... Uh, I don't it's... know why. She's very nice. Yeah, of course. Very misunderstood. Just misunderstood, yes. <laughs> well, thank you for coming in today. And welcome, uh, welcome back. We're, we're glad you. you're back. Yes, actually. add that sizzle into Emmerdale. Fantastic. Thanks, Thanks Nicola. Thank you. Well, we've got a, a bit of a nice Tuesday pick-you-up today to the tune of £12,000. Here's our Steve Wilson with the details. Not everyone can live life like a lord or lady in a magnificent mansion.